first you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Hey Bruce, looks like we got some planning to do for Albert's going away party, right? There are certainly some things we have to talk about now. Yeah, that's better than doing everything at the last minute. OK, so I can write some notes as we talk. Sure thing. So, when should we have the party? Hmm, he goes to Thailand on the 26th of August. OK, let's have it on the 24th then. Yes, let me see. That's a Friday. That'd be perfect. Now, where should we have it? At a bar or a club? You know, I think he would like something really intimate, nothing too loud. A restaurant would be good. Maybe the Apple Tree Grill? Great place, sounds good. OK, now we have to think about who to invite. Well, his best friend from college. Sure. And his cousins? Right. Oh, yes, his co-workers. Yeah, OK, his co-workers and his boss. Any other people? How about his yoga classmates? Hmm, he does love yoga, but that might be too many people. I suppose so. I can email and text message the invitations. When should I send them? We should send them out soon, but not too early. How about the 16th of August, then? Well, why not give it a few more days? The 13th? All right, I think that's a good time, too. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. OK, now, we have to think of a gift. Should we all get one? No, I was thinking we could all give money for the party and the gift. You know, something really nice. Yeah, that'd be better than getting him little things individually. I can ask for the money. Thanks for doing that. How much should we ask for? I think we should ask for maybe $15 each. Is that too much? No, not at all. He's going away for two years. That would give us about $150. That's a good amount. Yeah, well, I'm thinking we could get him something practical. Yes, especially since he's going abroad. Something he could use, something that's also portable. We could get him an article of clothing, perhaps, or maybe even a pair of shoes. Hmm, shoes are nice, but they might wear out easily, especially where he's going. Maybe a book light? A what? Yeah, he loves to read, and a book light would be very convenient when he travels. OK, that's one good gift idea. Did you write that down? Yep. Now, we need to think about reservations at the restaurant. Well, we should get their big banquet room, yeah? Yes, definitely. Should we ask the restaurant to prepare a buffet? Isn't that expensive? No, I don't think it is. A buffet dinner sounds cheaper than everyone ordering individual meals. Definitely. How about drinks? They can buy drinks themselves or bring their own. OK. Yeah, it would cost too much if we bought drinks ourselves. Certainly. We have to ask someone to bring an MP3 player. The restaurant has speakers and we can hook it up for music. Sounds good. Actually, there is one more thing that I thought we should do since Albert is leaving for such a long time. What were you thinking of? Maybe we could have a slideshow of all the fun times we've had. Hmm, that'll take a little bit of work, but I think it's a great idea. Actually, in the invitation, can you ask for some photos people have of him? Yeah, definitely. I can scan them or people can send me digital photos they have. All right. I'll tell them when I send out the invitations. Then I can make a little presentation. Ha! <laughs> I can't wait to see his reaction. Yeah, especially that one picture where... That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear Laura talk about this year's International Food Festival. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fourteen. Now listen to the first part of the talk and answer questions eleven to fourteen. Good morning, everyone. Today we have a special guest speaker. Laura Lanthor is director of the International Food Festival this year. Laura, can you tell us about what to expect at the festival? Of course, Vincent. This spring, people in the city can go to the seventh annual International Food Festival. This is a special event for the whole family. I do have to tell you, though, we are holding it at a different date than before. Easter is exceptionally early this year, and if the festival were held as usual, it would have fallen on the same weekend. This year, the festival will be held on the first week of April, before Easter. The festival will be held at the Walker Field grounds and will be divided into four main areas. There will be a Western food area with authentic representations of European cuisine. There will also be an East Asian section with chefs and products from Japan, Korea, and China. A South Asian section will have food from India, Vietnam, Thailand, and Indonesia. For the first time this year, we will also have a Latin American section where people can try things from Mexico, various Caribbean countries, and South America. There will also be special booths where people can learn about all these cuisines. This year, we are expanding the cooking workshop and demonstration portion of the festival. Attendees last year really seemed to like learning about food and having a hands-on experience. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions fifteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions fifteen to twenty. I'll give you a brief description of three of the workshops we have. Like I said, these allow you to participate directly in the making of food and teach you techniques you can use at home. For a full list of them, please go to our online website. We will give you the site address after the end of my talk. You will also find there the procedure to pre-register for the workshops. Pre-registration takes place when you buy your festival tickets and is highly recommended. Non-Western food has become increasingly popular these days, and many people are interested in how to cook such food at home. Such cuisines use a variety of different spices, ones that aspiring cooks might not be familiar with. Therefore, our world tour of spices is a good introduction to the flavor profiles of other cuisines. I would recommend it for adults who want to seriously learn about cooking. Small children might not take to the more exotic spices. One workshop that is meant for children is Candy Adventures. There are traditional activities like making gingerbread houses. Other activities teach basic decorating techniques, including the proper use of coloring dye. Kids can also learn how to make flowers and other objects out of cake frosting. We understand the concerns of parents regarding their children's health, so everything used in this workshop is either sugar-free or uses acceptable sugar substitutes. Lastly, we have a workshop that is suitable for the whole family. Salads Forever is a workshop for everyone interested in healthy eating. There will be different kinds of salads that people can try and demonstrations that show how to make them. Salads have grown in popularity these days and are a healthy addition to any diet if prepared the right way. The workshop will also teach how to make healthy salad dressings. I'm afraid that's all I have today. Please visit the festival website for more details. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute. 
to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear three students discussing an assignment they are doing together. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Hi, Alice. Wow, I'm about fifteen minutes late. Sorry about that. The bus got stuck in a lot of traffic. You want to go over the presentation we have to do now, or get something to eat? No problem. There's always traffic at this time. Juan and I were thinking we could eat afterwards, you know, so we could relax and enjoy our meal. Sounds good. So let's go over what we have to do again. Okay. Well, since it's a long presentation, we'll work together on the different parts of it. What did we decide to call it again? I think it was Eastern European economies move towards democracy and capitalism. The professor said the presentation had to be how long? Hmm. He said about thirty-five minutes. That is how long the three of us are supposed to present. Then there will be a ten-minute question and answer session. Any student or the professor may ask us a question regarding the topic. Our grade also depends on how well we do in that part. We also have to write a summary of our presentation, right? Yes, the summary of our presentation has to be submitted one week before our presentation date. It must be five hundred words. How are we going to do the presentation? I thought we could give the class a basic handout, like an outline of our presentation. We could even create a poster with a map of the area we were talking about. Well, I was thinking we could make a slideshow using computer software and then using a projector during our presentation. People pay more attention to images on a screen. Hmm. Well, actually, I've never really used that kind of software. I always thought a basic handout or poster was sufficient. I think giving the information we have with visuals like that will really make our presentation stand out. Well, it would have to be done really well to make any sort of impact, and I'm not sure if that would be a good use of time. Maybe it would be better to spend that time on research and writing. I don't think it would take away that much time. Well, all of us have to research the assignment well and write a really good presentation. I think making a fancy visual presentation wouldn't help. Actually, I think such slideshows are distracting. People focus more on the images on the screen than what the presenters are saying. I'm still not sure I agree with you. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. All right then, let's go through some of the reading material. What was the main text we had? It's called "The Political Economy of the Former Soviet Bloc" by Fovac. That's spelled F-O-V-A-C. Yes, that deals with the specific area of Europe we are researching. There is also an "Economy in Transition" by Smith. That one is published by the University Press. Well, the professor suggested another useful book, one that focuses on the leadership of those countries. Sometimes the personalities of those in power affected historical events. It's called "Foisted into Power" by Brown, published by the Academic Press in 2005. Well, 
We still have to plan out a few more things, but I am quite hungry now. Shall we get a snack before we proceed? Definitely. I'm getting a sandwich. I need some rice with lentil curry, that's for sure. Let's go to the all campus dining center then. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a student representative explaining the views of the student body about how a large donation to the school should be spent. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Thank you, Mr Chairman, for asking the student body about the recent large donation to our school and what it should be spent on. Also, thank you to the rest of the Board of Trustees for letting us have some say over how to improve our university. We know that sometimes students and administration have different priorities regarding the development of the school, but we hope you sincerely consider some of the ideas that are proposed. When the estate of Paul A. Madrib announced that he had left over $50 million to the school, the whole community was quite ecstatic and very grateful for such a generous gift. Since the initial euphoria has passed, though, we have all realised that some tough decisions have to be made. The donation can help fund new projects for the school or improve existing facilities and programmes. But there is not enough money to pay for every single idea. That is why the University Senate through an online survey, asked the student body what ideas they thought were best. The first part of this survey consisted of an open question. Students could list any number of different ideas. The results were then compiled in order to do a second online survey. Ideas that were totally impossible, or those that were jokes, were taken out. All the ideas that consistently came up again and again were put to a vote. We found that the four things that came up the most were all pretty different. I will mention them briefly before going over the pros and cons of each of them. In the first part of the survey, we saw over and over again that students wanted to improve the residential dormitories, completely redo the campus dining system, remodel the athletics building, and finally increase funding for research projects and grants, especially for those in science. Obviously, there is not enough money from the donation to pay for all those ideas, so we have to prioritise. The ideas that got the most votes were improving the residential dormitories and completely redoing the campus dining system. They both got 30% and 28% respectively of students saying that was what most of the money should be spent on. Many of the dorm facilities are quite old and definitely need some repair, particularly the shared bathrooms. Also, students have been complaining for a while that there is not an adequate number of dining facilities on campus and that the quality of the food at existing places is low. Spending most of the donation in these areas will definitely improve the quality of life on campus. However, a significant minority of the student population, about 40%, does not live on campus. They commute from their homes elsewhere and therefore would not benefit from those improvements. 25% of students thought improving the athletics building was the best use of the money 
and 17% voted for giving money to research projects for science. There are many people who are attracted to our university because of our athletics programs, so improving the building would improve the reputation of the university. Only a small percentage of students actually ever use the athletics building, however. Though it received the fewest votes, giving money to university research projects has great potential. Any new patents that come about because of that research can possibly earn the school lots of money. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.